are just getting our first conversation for this morning started. Of course, we're bringing you our Meet the Mayoral Candidates segment, and today we are heading to the West. So joining us right now for our first conversation, we have uh, the incumbent mayor of the Twin Towns, San Ignacio and Santa Elena. We have Earl Trapp, who is also the United Democratic Party's candidate for the upcoming municipal election as well. Uh, good morning, Mayor Trapp. Good morning, Mr. Gavin, and good morning, Ms. Marlene. Thank good you. morning, Belize, yeah, thanks. especially residents of San Ignacio and Santa Elena. Thank you so much it's for joining pleasure. us. It's a pleasure to be on your show this morning. Yeah, it's definitely a pleasure to have you. Now, we are only a few weeks away from the election, and you are, of course, uh, the incumbent candidate. So um, just very briefly, we can start by talking. How are you feeling knowing that the election is so close and uh, that you are trying to um, hold on to another term? Um, at this time, as what I would always say, I feel very good about myself and my team. And um, the reason why I'm saying this is because of the fact that since we assume office in March of 2018 for this team, we began working. And um, today, if you walk around San Ignacio and Santa Elena, you drive around San Ignacio and Santa Elena, you can see the results of hard work and dedication. So that in itself will speak on the 3rd of March. Um, that's basically what the people have been saying. I mean, no, while we have done a lot of work, there are still many work to get done, but as per normal, we will never get to 100 person, but certainly I'm feeling myself and my team, we're feeling very good of ourselves, especially as we walk the trail. Um, we're basing our, um, the feeling based on the responses that we have been receiving so far. How have you been campaigning? We know COVID has changed things significantly for uh, the typical campaign season. Well, um, certainly we need to take the COVID protocols seriously into consideration. Um, we are out in person, in small groups, um, talking from a distance, and um, certainly we are using our social media, we're using the different media houses. Um, we have been using our phones, but um, definitely it's different from those other years when we were able to campaign freely without having to worry about this virus. Um, but we, we, we are um, definitely trying our best to keep our distance, even though at times the people get excited and just run up upon you, you know, and you cannot just push them off for them. We just have to be careful. We're out there with our sanitizers. We're out there with our alcohol and whatever we can, we do to keep each other safe. Yeah. And you know, earlier you were talking about uh, a little bit of the work that you've done since you were first um, elected in 2018. So, uh, of course, as the incumbent candidate, people will be looking at things that you've done as sort of your report card and in scoring you how you uh, fare in the upcoming chances. So if you could look back um, since 2018 to now, what, what are some of the projects that perhaps you're most proud of or that you've considered some of your best or your team's best accomplishments? Yes, well, um, I will go back to 2015, sir. Mm -hmm. Because one of the biggest achievement for this municipality since under my tenureship has been the construction of this new town hall. And believe me, it wasn't an easy one. One where because we were in the old town hall and it was in a dilapidating condition. 
And um, I was forced basically to move from out there because it got to a point where some of our um, staff members began gathering in little groups. And you know what? Planning to, you know what? Just stay out because they weren't feeling safe in the building. A big vehicle might pass or a truck might pass around the corner and the vehicle, the, the house would, 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 would the, the building would then literally shake. You know, big prefaces on the walls. So we had to move and we had to move to an area that we had to rent for $7,000 a month. But as a concern leader, I don't want our municipality taxpayers money to be going into rental for the rest of our lives and still not owning anything. So we had to brainstorm and we thought that, you know what, we need to own, have our own. And we did the different logistics. We began with the selling of the property there and we gave that to the contractor and the proceeds from that is how we began this building. And later on, we had to get the cabinet to amend the town council act to give the different municipalities the autonomy to make such a loan. And that's where we are today. And I can tell you that we are basically in this building and whatever we were paying to the rent is going towards the, 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 the repayments. And again, we are getting like $10,000 per month for rental from this building. So in reality, if we, we, we are like operating as if though we were renting there, but at the end of the day, after we are through with the loan payments, this building belongs to the council and the rental that will be coming in, that will be more like a revenues that we can use to work something like within the tongues. We can work on the um, streets, drains or whatever project that the, my successors would look as more important or priority. But um, definitely we have turned what were termed to be more a capital into a, a, a revenue, regen revenue generating project. Mm -hmm. um, that's this, this, this is one of the main. Mm -hmm. If you notice, um, we have really uplifted the, the um, in, uh, enhanced our municipalities in both San Ignacio and Santa Elena. Um, we have worked around along the Macal Park. We have cemented several streets, several drains. We have built a nice chapel in Santa Elena, especially in times like these that we are going through COVID-19 where we cannot cluster. People can use the chapel to, 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 to have service for their loved ones before they are laid to rest in an open area that is more safe. We have built several drains, especially in low-lying areas, areas that would be get inundated after a torrential rain. Those are very much key projects. We are working currently on a synthetic football turf that is opposite the town hall at the moment, but we put a slight little halt on that because of the fact that even if we get it done, we cannot play football because it's a contact sport. Um, we have assisted the outer communities in building streets, areas that were subdivided and were never, um, and never had the proper infrastructure. It then became the responsibility of the council and that in itself have really been taking up a lot of time. But we certainly have come a long way in trying to get um, our infrastructure in place. Um, we are considered the number one inland tourism destination mm -hmm. and we will continue to work on different destinations that we will later um, roll out as a Twin City tour, mm -hmm. something that will help us to stimulate the local economy here in San Ignacio and Santa Elena. But we have come a long way and um, the residents, in my humble opinion, based on their um, interaction with us, are very much grateful of, um, of the developments thus far. I, I, I wanted, you mentioned the, the fact that, uh, you know, you're one of the top destinations in the country. And in your engagement with the, the citizens of, or the residents of both towns, I'd imagine they're having a really tough time since we know um, it's a struggle to kind of get tourism going once again. 
Um, you had the devastation of the floods uh, just at the end and the beginning of the year. So talk to us about uh, some of the concerns that you're hearing from them. One of the major concerns at this moment is the fact that, and, and please, I, I hope um, I'm not getting political here. Um, one of the concerns, main concern is that before November 11th elections last year, many of these people were getting pantry. And um, right after elections, everything changed. So at least they were depending on this. This have been helping them all along now. They are back to almost square one. Um, other concerns are unemployment. Um, other concerns are basically drainage in some low-lying areas, especially in the outskirts of San Ignacio and Santa Elena. Mm -hmm. The concerns are drains and some streets. You know, and like I said, um, we have done a lot in terms of drains and streets, but with only a short period of having to work entire towns of San Ignacio and Santa Elena, it's growing exponentially. And with just that small amount of subvention that we get, no support from central government in terms of finances for projects, we have to honestly think out of the box and in trying to get more done. You know, so um, those are some of the basic concerns though. Uh, mainly, like I said, the, the food pantry that they were once getting, the unemployment. Mm. And um, of course, worse so, um, since then, many people that we met on the trails so far have been complaining of losing their jobs yeah. um, since elections of, of in, in November of last year. And what kind of commitments can you make to people with those specific circumstances? Wouldn't it then count against you in the campaign? Because people will be thinking, you know, if I vote in Mayor Trump, maybe things won't get moving in this area. Um, Ms. Marlene, I will be honest with you. And I, um, I would want to, for us to refer back to our Indraftown Council. Mm -hmm. Our Indraftown Council have been operating for the past three terms under a United Democratic Party government. That's a POP town council. And if you noticed, and we are fair and honest with us with ourselves, we will say that yes, the then Mayor Bernard really went the extra mile he thought out of the box. He made some hard decisions in being where they are today. And I can tell you, while I view them as a progressive municipality, I view San Ignacio and San Trinidad Council as a more progressive municipality. And I will tell you what, since we assumed office in 2015, we never relied on central government. We began looking towards our social and institutional partners for financing or grant, grant funding and projects. And um, up to today, because of the different proposals that we have been writing, we, until today, because it's a lengthy process, some of them, we are receiving responses. And I can tell you that we are receiving a new trash truck from Taiwan in June of this year. Mm -hmm. We are currently working on proposals to the five C's organization that is about um, completion. And I can tell you that this one, I can tell you, will definitely assist us to help our residents here in San Ignacio and Santa Elena, something that will create hundreds of jobs. You know, it's it's a project that is geared towards 
climate change and flood mitigation. So we are looking forward to this. And um, this is in the, in the um, basically about it's 10 million US dollar grant funding to the five C's organization. Yeah. And this is about nearing completion. And again, I believe that in March, we are expecting some sort of disbursement. This is just this goes to show you how long ago we've been working on, on these proposals because we have been seeing the light around the curve. So we you've have been, been seeing, okay. yes. Sorry, no, I was, I was just gonna clarify. So your, your plan um, is, is being able to access grant funding and working with international donors to try to keep the work, to keep the work going in uh, San Ignacio and That's Santa right. Elena. That yeah. is correct. Yeah. Now, and I can, go ahead. Yes, go ahead. Yes, you, you, you go ahead, Ms. Yeah. No, I, I was going to ask the question because um, when, you, when you talk about things like flood mitigation pro projects, it's, there are risks associated with the area um, that these towns are, are um, situated. And so some of it you, you won't always be able to mitigate. But what have been your plans in being able to alleviate uh, the financial and, and personal loss that people experience when we do have excessive rains that causes floods? Indeed, we won't be able to mitigate everything. Yeah. And this is one of the reasons why I've been telling people that had a concern. For example, if you look at the market area, people were concerned when we began constructing the market along the riverbank. Flood will come and flood will take away the market. But we cannot think in that manner. Yeah. We have to be more optimistic about things, you know? And um, when certain things happen, then we think about how we will cross that bridge, yeah. you know? So um, in other areas, I can tell you that whatever we have done so far in flood mitigation, the uh, areas that were prone to flooding in the last rains, and um, storms that we had, those areas weren't flooding out. And that was as a result of us working ahead of time, cleaning the main channel behind that neighborhood. And of course, we had constructed some nice, wide, and deep um, concrete drains. So all uh, this had really worked in the area. And it's just a certain area, it's a comprehensive drainage project that needs to start from the point where the people, where it affects most of the people and going all the way up to where the water starts. But it's a comprehensive drainage pro project. And I can tell you that so far it's been working, but we still have the downtown San Ignacio that gets inundated after a, an hour or two of torrential rains. And those are the areas that we need to target. We have the main drains that empties out into a river. We want to divert those drains into a, and, and create a wetland that will mm -hmm. filter the water before it seeps into the river. So those are some of the main projects that is geared towards the, the, the um, climate change, flood mitigation, and of course, um, um, Five C's organization goes for, for, for such mm -hmm. projects. And, and how do you prioritize what you want to do if you're reelected? What's that? How do you prioritize what work you want to what you want to do if you are reelected? Okay. One of how we what, what we prioritize. First of all, I must say that whatever we put to the table is as a result of us talking to the people and feeling them out as to what are the main concerns. Mm -hmm. And um, so a, we we need to go into consultation. Consultation is key and very important um, for us to include residents in, in um, making such decisions. Mm -hmm. But we have, um, the priority, priority right now is job creation. The priority is to put food on the table. Mm -hmm. And um, we have a national bus terminal. Again, like I said, it's so many projects that we have in the pipeline for this community. 
It's a national bus terminal that we want to construct here in San Ignacio and Santa Elena. We have begun the process and we have, we basically have IDB Invest working along with us. They are financing um, the first step um, that is ongoing as, as we speak, because what we want to do is to finance this through a um, GPs initiative, public private um, partnership initiative. Mm -hmm. And this will create a lot of jobs. This will move the congestion from within the downtown San, San Ignacio a little out. We want to do the second phase of our market, which is a two story. Uh, we have been advertising it again for a, a year or so. And we continue to seek financing for that. Um, if needs be, then we might have to go into a 3 piece initiative as well. Mm -hmm. um, another initiative uh, I think that we need to focus on is, is basically empowering um, single period matters. And we have a property right below here by the town council. And again, we want to build a structure which is very inexpensive. It's not, I mean, we, we use our human resources to, to, to do those stuff so it becomes much cheaper. And we want to use that to basically assist single peer matters to learn a trade. And then we can use the same facility if it's seasonal to, to, to maybe learn a trade, yeah. um, woodwork, um, Let's uh, uh, but 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 there, there there are many things that the people have been asking and um, yeah. I believe that those are very much viable projects that are very much and un easily reachable or, or, or attainable. Mm -hmm. Now your 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 slogan is is looking at uh, continuing the progress that you feel like you've set with your first term. Let's talk about um, some of the qualities that you bring to the table, especially in a time like this. Um, and the, the team members that you have, the rest of your slate. All right, my, um, I will start with my, my team. Basically, we have two, um, I would say two, two, two members in my state right now that have been there since the last term. We have Mr. Mark O'Brien, we have Ms. Barnett Fernandez. Um, these um, two people have been very much involved in our community. Mr. O'Brien have been involved with the um, school, with, with, with education, and he have been assisting many students, tutoring them. Mrs. Fernandez have been working with the elderly. Um, she has been advocating for them. And um, we have been doing fundraisers to assist in areas that she believes is necessary for the to, to meet the needs of, of, of some of the people because we cannot do all. Then we have Miss um, Miss Eliana Moreno. Um, she was once a counselor again, and um, she worked with Niche and she is involved much, in, um, very much in in arts, you know. And um, she can definitely assist our single parents here. We have Mr. Abdel Kowo, who is presently a member of the Child Advisory Board, and um, he has been working very closely with the um, with helping us to promote San Ignacio and Santa Elena as a child-friendly municipality. We have um, Mr. Lynn Valentine that has been very much involved with sports, very charismatic, um, assisting people in the community. And then we have the other youth, um, Mr. Figueroa, who um, again um, is involved with with sports and um, I think um, he has a lot in bringing to the table in terms of accounting and he can assist us in trying to better off our accounting here at the, at the town hall. And for you personally, Mayor Trapp, why do you think that people will have confidence in you to lead them through another term? The people will have confidence in me as their next leader because of my track record, uh, my track record of hard work, dedication, and my heart, my, my track record of delivering um, job creation that I have been doing. We have been doing a lot of um, 
rotational work in trying to reach out to the many people that are in need. And um, people are very much into the ideas that we are selling them, the, especially one, ideas that are basically in line with stimulating the local economy. You know, in times like this, we need to reach out to our people. This time we want to, we have done a lot of infrastructure, but this time we want to touch the people's lives personally. And I can tell you because things have been so hard, people have been coming to us, we decided to use a big chunk of our revenues and we have been providing grocery bags to the more needed people. And this will continue for the next six months. And if the pandemic continues in the same manner, then we will extend it to the end of the year, which means that the infrastructure um, works will, 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 will um, it will not halt, be halted, but we will slow down on that because we believe that the, we need to put the people first. We need to touch our lives personally, especially when we are going through this. All of us are suffering, so we will touch our lives personally this time. Mm -hmm. okay. Well, uh, Mayor Trapp, we are just about almost out of time. So uh, before we close off this conversation, we'd like to give you a chance to speak directly to your residents and your voters, and you can leave them with any final message that you would want, and you can uh, let them know why it is they should vote for you and your team. Yeah, well, um, thank you. Thank you, sir. Um, once again, I would like to greet our residents here in San Ignacio and Santa Elena. And um, I'm humbly coming to you once more, along with my team, seeking your humble support. And I want to basically emphasize that we are not running on a manifesto promises. We are running on a track record, like I said earlier, of hard work and dedication. Um, like um, the whole saying would say, the proof is in the pudding. If you walk around San Ignacio and Santa Elena, you will see numerous developments. And I am very much like the many residents of San Ignacio and Santa Elena, very proud to call myself a resident of San Ignacio and Santa Elena. San Ignacio and Santa Elena have come a long way. It's not by luck, like I said, or by chance, but it's by hard work and dedication. It's by bringing our residents, it's being, by bringing the business community together. It's by building relationship with the people. And this, I believe, is what will take us through the home so that we can continue the good works. So we can continue to be proud of our municipality. So we can continue to be the shining beacon on top of the hill. With that said, I would like to once again thank the residents of San Ignacio and Santa Elena for their support in advance. And I would like to take this opportunity to thank my staff here at the office and especially on the field, those workers that are out there on a daily basis, basis giving their all for their residents, giving their all to develop our community. Without them, we wouldn't be able to be where we are. And that's the reason why I always say the most important resource in any organization, in any company or any institution, the most important resource are our human resource. So a big up to all of, of our staff here in the office and in the field. And once again, to all our residents and business people that have been that have been a part of, of, of this development thus far. Right. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, Ms. Marlene. And thank Anything you. else, we're here. Yeah, thank you for, for joining us this morning. We want to ensure that all our viewers in the Cayo area had an opportunity to meet the mayoral candidates. So we appreciate you being here. Of course, please stay safe on the campaign trail. We certainly will. And all I right. thank you guys for this opportunity. Thank you, Belize. God bless everyone. And with that, uh, that concludes the first half of our meet, meet, meet or mayoral candidates. Uh, this is, of course, specifically looking at the mayoral candidates in San Ignacio, Santa Elena. So we'll take the break. When we come back, we'll be joined by the PUP representative. So please stay tuned.